Hello, and welcome to Bird Watching. Birds and native plants, the essential connection. I'm your host and fellow bird watcher, Sharon Sorensen. Perhaps you saw the headlines recently that we've lost three billion birds in the last 40 years. That's more than a quarter of the world's entire avian population. And so the question, of course, is why? And while there are contributing factors, two most important reasons come to the forefront. Habitat loss and insecticide use. So what do we mean by habitat loss? For birds, survival is always, always, and forever about habitat. They have only two purposes in life, to survive and reproduce. And to do that, they need food, shelter, nest sites and nest materials, and water. And the interesting part of that is that plants provide everything but the water. Native plants, that is. As the saying goes, native plants support native bugs that feed our native birds. So with the loss of native plants and the loss of habitat, we've contributed significantly to the loss of those three billion birds worldwide. So what do we mean by native? Well, it's anything that grew here roughly since prior to 1492, and that's a very simplistic definition, I know that. But it includes everything from our native pecan trees to our native elderberries to our native asters to our native joe pie weed to our native liatris and everything in between. But the elephant in the room is always, yeah, but natives look awful. They're weedy, they're ragged, they don't behave themselves well. I don't want natives in my front yard. Well, I'm here to tell you that maybe you should take another look at it. Because indeed, there are native plants that look terrific in the landscape. And they behave themselves very well in confined spaces. And they add to the habitat for birds. And above all, they go well beyond the typical perennials that people think they have to plant if they're going to have natives. It's all in a matter of knowing which things to plant. And I speak to you from experience because for various reasons our front yard had to be dug up. I was left with this barren mess. You're standing basically at the corner of the concrete drive that moves across the front and to your left and the front sidewalk across to your right. And then keep in mind where that little green yard shed is because this spot moved from barren and ugly in less than a year to this. You're still standing at the corner of the driveway in the sidewalk with the little green shed in the background. And all of these native plants brought about some really interesting results. First of all, I had year-round color because we planted things that bloom from various times of the year from early spring into late fall. And we planted everything from bulbs to perennials to vines to shrubs to ground covers, to things that would be attractive to the birds, things that would be attractive to the bugs and the butterflies, and things that bloom from early spring, as I said, through late summer into very late fall, this through even the early frosts. I think that's attractive. I hope you would too. But here's the idea. Because of all the different kinds of things that we planted, the yard dramatically expanded its biodiversity. So yes, I planted native trees. Yes, I planted native shrubs. Yes, I planted a few native perennials. Yes, I planted native vines. Indeed, I planted native grasses. And yes, I planted native ferns and sedges. And so all of this biodiversity, well, did it matter? Did it matter that I added 300 native plants to try to attract more birds to the yard? Was it worth the effort? 
Well, my previous high year count was 114 species, and so already it's obvious there's a challenge. Because to have 114 species in your yard over a given year uh, is a fairly high number to begin with, and so to exceed that number certainly is a challenge. Because after all, some of the birds come here only to nest in the summer. Some come only in the winter to escape the more northerly Arctic blasts. Some migrate through the speed of lightning in the spring, just stopping long enough to feed and fatten up enough to move on the next day, and then migrate back through in the fall in a more lingering fashion. Some were with us all year. Now, as I said, my earlier count had been 114 species. So did the 300 new plants matter? Indeed, the new year-long count was 127 species. And I'm not embarrassed to say that I was pleased because that's almost a 15% increase in the bird species populations over the best previous year-long count. But there's a kicker to all of this. One number that probably stands out more than any other and that is only 29 of them, only 29 of the 127 came to feeders. Think about it. That's significant. So what brought the other 98 species or the other 77%? Well, I, I know you know where this is going because you know what the topic is, but really? How does that come to be? Well, every species has its own set of demands. Not all bird species eat the same things. Not all bird species build their nests in the same kinds of places. Not all bird species build their nests of the same materials. So the more kinds of things you offer, the greater the diversity, then the more diverse the bird species your yard attracts and supports. So the greater the variety of those plants, not only the variety of structure, but the variety of what they offer, it all makes a difference in the variety of birds. In short, the other 98 bird species visited because diverse native vegetation provided the habitat they needed. The food, the shelter, the nest sites, the nest materials. And it brought them to the yard, whether it was in the summer, during migration, or during the winter. Bottom line, there's way more to attracting birds than feeders and seed. It's habitat, and habitat is pretty much defined as native plants. 96% of all songbirds feed their babies bugs. Lots and lots and lots of bugs in adult larval and egg farms. And to raise one bird, again, depending on the species, adults feed about 300 caterpillars a day. What about your yard? 300 caterpillars every day? By fledging, those nestlings consume 4,000 bugs, especially caterpillars, and, then, and the nestling time is roughly two weeks. Thereabouts, again, depending on the species. So 4,000 caterpillars over two weeks in your yard? And here's the reason. Native plants, native bugs, and native birds evolved together. They have a symbiotic relationship. In short, they support one another. And we've cost them habitat by taking away those native plants and substituting instead our roses and our tulips and our daylilies and all of the things that we think are attractive because they're in the nurseries. But recently, another headline really had some impact. It came out on the National Audubon Society website in April of 2019, and it said, Yards with non-native plants create food deserts for bugs and birds. Food deserts, huh? Interesting. Dr. Douglas Tallamy, University of Delaware, reports new research finds that Carolina chickadees 
require a landscape with 70% native plants to keep their population steady. Now the word steady is key here. Of course you see chickadees feeding on commercial seeds that you offer in your bird feeders. But when they raise their babies, and when they keep their population steady by reproducing, they feed their babies bugs. And those bugs are supported by native plants. So to put it another way, to feed the birds, we have to first feed the bugs. And that implies that second problem. We must never, ever, ever use insecticides in the yard. There are many more studies that point to the now crucial importance of planting native and if you simply search for them, they're readily available. And so given that, and you want to do something to make your yard native, what's that native garden going to look like? Well, you know what? They're as diverse as those of us who plant them and take care of them. It can be anything from mostly evergreen shrubs that need very little tending, but we're talking native evergreens. It can be native, an array of native flowers that produce basically a cottage garden. It can be such a great mix of shrubs and vines and perennials, depending on your space, depending on your time, depending on your interests, and depending on actually the composition of the soil and the environment in your yard. And so native can look terrific but it is a matter of choosing the right plants for the right place in the right conditions. But the urgency grows, people. We've already lost three billion birds. A 70% native yard provides the vital life or death link between birds and bugs. We really can't afford not to plant native, not to provide the host plants for the bugs, so that 96% of our songbirds can feed their babies. And so I've developed a very simple five-step plan based on my own experience, and it's the school of hard knocks, I'm, I'm telling you. But there are well-behaved plants that look great in landscape. And I've listed plants according to yard size, because you can't plant the same thing in a pots and patio yard as you can plant if you have a vast estate of acres. I've also arranged them by states from Minnesota to Louisiana, roughly all parts east, because what's native in Minnesota is not native in Louisiana and is not native in Delaware. And so included are descriptions with all 160 full color photos to give you a guide, a way to get started. And all of these bits of information are found in the book called Planting Native to Attract Birds to Your Yard. It's available at your favorite bookstores. It's available in your favorite online sources. So thank you for watching Birds and Native Plants and Essential Connection. I hope you'll share this video with other friends who you think would be as interested as you are in attracting birds to their yard. Meanwhile, Enjoy the birds, and may you always have birds in your binoculars.